So day before yesterday, the government of India Ministry of Health and Family of Welfare has released revised guidelines for home isolation of mild asymptomatic COVID-19 cases. We see a lot of people around us who are COVID positive and there are some who are not even COVID positive but have all the symptoms. All of them, you know, should be treated like COVID positive patients and these guidelines are very, very helpful, you know, because there has been a lot of change from the previous guidelines which were issued on 2nd July in 2020. There have been more treatments. So I would request you that this is just awareness. All the medicines have to be strictly taken after consultation from your doctor. You can consult your doctor over teleconsultation, on phone or other means, but the doctor has to be consulted first for sure. So, uh, you know, who is a mild is asymptomatic case who can be at home this has to be clinically assigned. That means the doctor has to decide that. So it is not your own decision. Make sure you consult a doctor and you know he will clinically assign you to be a mild or asymptomatic case. This doctor can be the doctor who is present at the government testing site. This doctor can be your own family doctor. This doctor can be the doctor who comes uh, from the district uh, uh, medical team or it can be any other medical officer. Now the asymptomatic cases, you know, how do you define asymptomatic cases? Asymptomatic cases are laboratory confirmed cases who are not experiencing any symptoms and whose oxygen saturation is more than 94. So how do you check oxygen saturation? We had seen before it is using a pulse oximeter, which is this equipment, <coughs> which has to be more than 94%. Now, who are mild cases? Very important. People who have upper respiratory tract symptoms, you know, coughing, uh, they have a runny nose, and there are so many other respiratory tract symptoms without shortness of breath. There should be no shortness of breath, and the oxygen saturation should be more than 94%. Who will decide that? It's a clinically assigned. That means the doctor will decide that. Do not take this decision yourself. Let the doctor decide it, please. Who are patients eligible for home isolation? Even though the doctor decides that, it is good to, uh, you know, see the criteria for your own awareness only. So first of all, very important point: the clinic, the patient should be clinically assigned by a treating medical officer that this person is a mild or asymptomatic case. Second, there should be requisite facility at the residence. You know, separate washroom is highly advisable. You know, separate room. That room should not be connected to the other rooms. You know, some in some homes is very difficult, but still some arrangement can be made like this. Now, the caregiver should be available 24 by 7. You know, the person cannot be, uh, you know, left alone. There has to be one caregiver present in that facility. And there should be some link between this caregiver and the hospital. Elderly patients. Now, these are the patients. I'll list the patients uh, who are not, you know, good idea this is not a good idea that these people be at home isolation but they can be in home isolation after proper evaluation by a treating medical officer now these are elderly patients who are more than 60. number two those with comorbid conditions such as hypertension diabetes heart disease chronic lung liver kidney disease and you know cerebro cerebrovascular disease etc now this etc is something i cannot define you cannot define let the doctor define it and decide, you know, and they will be allowed. That means the doctor will tell them that, okay, you can be in home isolation. Another case is patients suffering from immunocompromised status, people having HIV, people who are transplant recipients, people undergoing cancer therapy, etc. Now again, etc. means that you have to talk to your doctor, tell them all your history and the doctor is going to decide whether you can be in home isolation or not. Now, this is important. Even though the doctor decides this, you have to be aware that the caregiver, that is if you're giving care, and all the close contacts within the same house, preferably, of such cases who are in the mild asymptomatic case, should take hydro, hydroxychloroquine prophylaxis. This is a medicine which has to be taken as per protocol. That means you cannot self-prescribe. There is absolute no to self-prescription. It has to be taken, you know, when the treating medical officer tells you to take it. 
it can be your doctor it can be the district doctor it can be the uh, doctor you have you know uh, requested for your care you know <clears throat> and uh, the, the the point here is that they have a protocol to follow and this is being told to you only for self awareness that these are the new guidelines in addition there are some more guidelines which are available on this website this is this mo MOH Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. These are guidelines for home quarantine for other family members. Now, what are the instructions for the patient? Number one, isolate, separate room, especially from elderly in the house, especially from people in with comorbid conditions like hypertension, because they are at a higher risk. A patient should be in a well-ventilated room. Why is it important? Because ventilation has dilutional effect. COVID-19 is airborne infection, so. Small aerosol droplets are released into the air. If there is ventilation, these droplets will be flushed out and they'll be destroyed by sunlight and by the huge, uh, you know, uh, by, by, by dilution outside when they go outside from your room into the <coughs> outdoors. And uh, patients should always wear triple layer medical mask. This is a medical mask. Triple layer three should be worn and this should be discarded eight hours after use or earlier if they are, you know, if they get spoiled, they get uh, wet or something like that. Now, in case they have to talk, the caregiver and the patient, both should wear an N95 mask. It's an N95 mask, you know, so both of them should wear an N95 mask. <clears throat> mask should be discarded before disinfecting in 1% sodium hypochlorite solution is available in the market. Patient must take rest and lot of fluids patient must follow respiratory etiquettes at all time frequent hand washing is important you know you can be using alcohol based sanitizer or soap and water for at least 40 seconds don't share personal items with people in the household make sure all the surfaces are cleaned with one percent hypochlorite solution tabletops door knobs handles uh, you know and all the things which the patient has touched they have to be cleaned regularly and self-monitoring with this blood oxygen saturation pulse oximeter is very 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 important and the patient you know has to keep recording all these things what all has to be recorded into a monitoring chart so this is the format for a monitoring chart make sure to record it on a piece of paper the day of the symptom and time <clears throat> every four hourly has to be recorded a temperature using a thermometer digital or otherwise heart rate from pulse oximeter SpO2 level from pulse oximeter. How are you feeling? Better, worse, or same? Breathing. Is it better? Is it same? Or is it worse? This has to be recorded so that whenever you talk to a doctor, whenever the doctor comes in or you know <clears throat> calls you, you have this monitoring chart ready, which you can share using WhatsApp, using mail or something. And he actually gets the trend as to what trend is happening with you. And so that he can prescribe further medication or advice based on this monitoring chart. Now, instruction for caregivers. Caregivers should always wear triple layer medical mask. You know, whenever they are in the, in the same room as the patient, they should wear N95 mask. Front portion of the mask should not be touched, you know, while you're working. For example, if I'm wearing the mask, front portion will have the probable chances of infection placed on the front side. So when you're touching this, the front portion, and you're touching the pool or you're touching the surfaces, it actually, spreading the infection mask get wet so that gets wet or dirty through the secretions immediately change the mask discard the mask after use and perform hygienic disposal that is you know disposal after cleaning with one person sodium hydrochloride you know people should not touch their face nose or mouth hand hygiene very important hand hygiene must be done using uh, soap and water you know using Alcohol based drugs, you know, the things commonly available, hand sanitizer, they, said they have to be used very often. And uh, whenever you are using some kind of a clean uh, cloth, the cloth has to be replaced. Whenever you are using gloves, the hand has to be washed before putting the gloves and after you put the gloves also. Now, very important, you know, no patient's secretions should not be touched by the caregiver. Now, there should be no sharing of utensils, no sharing of contaminated items. Food must be provided to the patient in his room. Patient should not go to the dining room. Utensils and dishes used by the patient should be cleaned with soap and detergent and wearing gloves. Utensils 
or you know and dishes may be reused it's not like you have to compulsorily use disposable plates so a lot of people are using disposable plates that's because you know some people from outside are supplying in the same house same things can be reused clean hands after taking off gloves you need to have, make sure you clean your hands after you take off gloves and even after you wear your gloves uh, hygiene has to be uh, done properly because you know gloves also you know whether touching or taking them off there is a chance that it is infection so after taking your glove off also wash your hands biomedical waste disposal very important there is there's a there's a guideline there's a link down here by cpcp central pollution control board you know you have to segregate it put it in yellow packets which are sealed and they have to be taken separately and separately disposed now treatment very important there has been a change earlier it was only some basic medicines now these medicines please have to be taken only after consultation from your doctor but this is only for your awareness number one very important must be patient must be in communication with the treating physician and promptly report in case of any deterioration continue the medications for comorbid illness for example you are already having some what are you having you are having uh, you know some kind of heart issue some kind of diabetes you are having diabetes uh, or you are having thyroid so all those medicines have to be continuously taken ask you but you have to ask your physician or your doctor before you know inform him and take his advice on uh, how you should take it whether some change has to be made or not now following you have to do symptomatic treatment If you get fever, take fever medicine. If you get runny nose, take runny nose medicine. If you have cough, take cough medicine. But let your doctor know, please. Now, warm water goggles and steam twice a day is very very essential. And you know, fever is not controlled with a maximum dose of paracetamol, which is six fifty mg. You know, lot of uh, paracetamol, a very common medicine, available in lot of names. People call it, you know, like. Uh, very commonly, Paracept is a Cyplas product. This is also Paracetamol. Uh, then, people whose uh, temperature does not get controlled, call your doctor, and you can take medicines like which are non-steroidal and non-inflammatory, like naproxen 250 mg twice a day. But I am not a doctor. Neither are you. You have to call your doctor and tell him that these are the medicines you are taking. This video is for awareness because these are the new guidelines. Which have just come day day before yesterday. There's a new tablet which people have been prescribing. Doctors have been prescribing. So ca call your doctor and ask whether you have to take ivermectin, which is 200 mg mcg uh, per kg once a day. Now this is based on your body weight. Please call, tell your doctor your body weight, and he will prescribe you the right dose of ivermectin. This has to be taken empty stomach for three to five days. But this is based. Only on your doctor's prescription, please. Then there is this inhalational uh, budesonide, which has to be given using inhalers with a spacer at dose of 800 mcg twice daily for five to seven days. To be given if symptoms of fever and cough are persistent beyond five days of disease onset. <coughs> the disease, the decision to administer remdesivir. Now remdesivir, lot of people are talking about it. Remdesivir or any investigational therapy must be taken by a medical professional and only in a hospital. Do not take remdesivir at home. It cannot be administered at home. It has to be administered only in a hospital under a supervision and continuous surveil, uh, you know, supervision of the medical staff, nurses, and the doctor. Cannot be taken at home. And you know, systemic oral steroids not indicated in mild disease. they have to be taken if symptoms persist beyond 7 days only after consultation from your doctor in case of falling oxygen or shortness of breath person should require hospital admission only in the case of falling oxygen saturation or shortness of breath is hospital required now when to seek medical attention also i repeat this number one there is difficulty in breathing immediate Medical attention is required in these four cases: difficulty in breathing, or dip in oxygen saturation below 94 percent, or pain and pressure in the chest, or mental confusion, or inability, you know, like uh, to you know uh, to get up, to you know, there is confusion, there is brain fog, something like that. Please, please take medical attention. 
Now, when to discontinue home isolation? Your normal, your mild asymptomatic case, you did not require medical attention. When can you discontinue home isolation? Patient, I will read this. Patient under home isolation will stand discharged in end isolation after 10 days have passed from the onset of symptoms. Onset of symptoms. It says 10 days after onset. When your first symptom started, from that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10th day, your, you can end your home isolation. Or from the date of sampling for asymptomatic case. Now, if there are no symptoms and you are asymptomatic case, when do you end? From the date of your sampling, when your test sample was taken. And another requirement is, one is this day requirement. The other requirement is, there should be no fever for three days. One more important thing, there is no need for testing after the home isolation period is over. People are rushing to get themselves tested after the home isolation. If you have no symptoms, if you're feeling well, as per the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare guidelines, there is no need for testing after the home isolation period is over. Please consult your doctor and uh, take his advice also. <coughs> now there are some uh, duties for the district and health authorities. These are for them to follow. For uh, all the people who are watching this video, it is important to understand that these are the important, you know, uh, procedures that have to be followed, important points that have to be taken care. In the description down below, you will find all the links. You'll find the link to this PDF document. Number one, you'll number two, you will find uh, the link of the biomedical waste disposal CPCB. Number three, uh, you're also going to find the uh, home quarantine guidelines for other members of the family. Thank you so much. Please, I hope you all get well soon. Take care.